Okay, the mission begins. Let's try one more time. Okay, here I am again. It's dawn now. We'll see what happens today. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story today. First off, I decided to head back over to Micro Center this morning, wait online, and see what happened. Because Tuesday is supposed to be pretty good in terms of trucks arriving, as they told me last week. Anyway, you've already seen this stuff. My 3080. And you've seen this one, but only in a box. And that's all I'm going to cover today as well. 3060 Ti. Today I had the opportunity to get something else. Now I was open to what I might get. I could uh, have gone for anything else, um, something that would have been useful in a future build per se, or something that a friend of mine could use. So I was thinking about, well, the 6800 XT was from AMD was also on my list as something I would have seriously considered, you know, if they had had that. Or, or the 5000 series CPUs from AMD were also on the list. It was pretty open in terms of what I would do, but then I had the opportunity to get what I originally was shopping for. Here's the sales voucher they gave me to bring up to the front and claim it. Well, mission accomplished. I got myself uh, another 3000 series card, this time a 3070 from Asus. The 3070. It was all they had today. They had one 3090 and then they had uh, all the rest in terms of, I think they mentioned they got something like 50 cards today and the other, you know, 49 or maybe 50 were all 3070s. I was uh, a little sorry for some of the people that were in line with me. We stood there over two hours in the line and they were just looking for other things. Two of them were looking for 3080s and one of them was looking for a 5000 series. He's the same guy that actually had bought a 3090 a week before that when he showed up there in the afternoon and they had one left over or one that somebody had not claimed. So all three of them walked away with nothing. I was really shocked to see that and I felt bad that they had waited all that time and they couldn't get what they were looking for. But anyway, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do here. Uh, there are a lot of people that I know that are looking for these types of cards and I might you know, try to just sell it to them basically for what I paid. I also could decide to put it up for general sale or put it up for a bid, start off with the price I paid and see if anybody's interested. Just that that's another possibility. I'm a little bit hesitant about doing that though because, uh, well, I guess I could always get uh, insured and FedEx shipping. You know, that would obviously cost like another $50 to somewhere else in the United States, for example. But it's something that is possible. I just haven't decided yet. But what I'd like to ask people to do is put a comment below. I know it's asking a lot. You pretty much have to uh, be logged into YouTube to do that. But I'd like to know what your th suggestion is. In particular, I was thinking, Maybe I should switch. You know, right now I was scheduled and I already went over in detail this 3080, right? Maybe I should switch that to either the, the 3070 or the 3060 Ti even. You know it's in my build if you've seen my previous video on it. The main processor is a 3900X and it's got, uh, you know, going to have 32 gig of memory at running at 3600 megahertz and then a few other a nice motherboard, an, an X570 motherboard from Asus. So it's got some capability there. I originally, like I said, planned on putting a 3070 in, but I, I, I just couldn't resist the 3080 when I showed up to the store the last time I went. So if you could do that for me and just put a comment, let me know, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, I do want to cover, I'm not going to open these boxes up because if I decide to sell them or even give them away, I don't want to, you know, spoil them. I want to leave them so that they, the people who get them can have the same experience of opening it up, brand new package. So they're going to stay closed, but I'd like to go over some of the differences. I wasn't the only one that was there today looking for possibly getting a founder's card. Now it turns out that 
in our local area here, the only store that would carry the Founders Edition card directly from NVIDIA would be Best Buy. And apparently they've been having a lot of stocking problems overall. They have not gotten many of them at all. So, you know, that's sort of a futile attempt. And I did try going there once right after they ran out of cards at Micro Center, but uh, and they had not seen one of them in a long time. EVGA provides an opportunity where they put you on a waiting list. I've been on that waiting list for quite a while. I'll make a decision if I ever get contacted by them whether to buy a card. I'm going to go over some of the specs on these. I'm going to put up on the screen here right now the, uh, the various specifications. And I'm going to start with the NVIDIA 3060 Ti. I have, unfortunately, you can't find this on the NVIDIA site. I was surprised to find out. I had to go actually over to another site called uh, Tech Power Up to get these specs. And uh, that's what you see here in terms of the screen capture that I've put up. And it just shows all of the different specs that the one directly from NVIDIA, the Founders Edition, has. And I want to compare that to the uh, equivalent card, or it's not it's actually not equivalent, you know, it has, it costs more, the Asus uh, Dual 3060 Ti OC 8 gig. I know it's a mouthful, but I wanted to include that as the model in case somebody wants to look it up. Although you will see down below in this video at some point some links to that. And if I can't get a link that's usable, then what I will do is I'll just put the name down there so you can always, you know, look it up that way. But this shows the specs that came from the Asus website. It includes pretty much the same characteristics across the board, except on the next slide here, I have highlighted those that are different. So for example, the engine clock, the actual clock for the graphics card is higher. It's running a couple of hundred uh, megahertz higher. Uh, that's a noticeable difference that I believe some of the online reviewers have noted. I haven't seen one lately, but I believe some of them did note that. And that's usually the case with partner cards like this, right? They tend to put something extra in it, especially if they use the terminology OC for overclocking, right? The idea is that they got the thing running at a faster clock rate by default out of the box, and you wouldn't have to then do your own uh, tweaking and, and playing around with the overclocking functions because that takes a lot of trial and error to get that right. So the clock is definitely different, and it's both clocks, both the... Uh, if you put it in on what's called overclocking mode or what they refer to as the gaming mode. So their card actually has an option in their configuration tool, if you happen to use that, that allows you to switch between them. The other difference is it has an extra HDMI port. So the one that's from the FE from NVIDIA directly only, it has three display ports, but only one HDMI, whereas this one has three display ports and two HDMIs. Other options include the power connection, and in this particular one, it has one 8-pin connector rather than that you know, sort of unorthodox 12-pin connector that NVIDIA puts on its Founders Editions cards. So that's a little bit more convenient because most power supplies that are out there don't supply a cable. You always have to get some sort of adapter. I think you can actually buy adapters that match your color cable if you happen to got special cables in order to put your bill together and make it look nice. But, you know, that is something that, you know, I, I don't think I would like either, having that little Y fish, fish hook type of little cable that you have to put and layer it across the card and potentially block out some of your RGB. But that doesn't have much of it, but still, you don't want to block out what it has. The other thing that's a major difference is its dimension. Uh, this card here is only two fan and it's actually shorter. So in terms of length, it can go in a smaller case lengthwise, but it's a lot thicker. Whereas the, the card from Nvidia is only uses two slots. This one uses 2.7 slots. And those are the key differences between these boards. Uh, in addition to the fact that this is gonna cost you, you know, another 30 to $50, depending on where you buy it, over what the base suggested retail price is for the NVIDIA uh, for the NVIDIA Founders Edition card. Now let me switch gears and this next slide shows the same stats. This is from the NVIDIA site. So they do have this one up there, the 3070, and all of the specs that are associated with that. I'm not going to go through all of these things. They have a lot more here than probably are necessary. A lot of yes, no options all over the place. You know, sort of makes it difficult to read some of this, but I do have the Asus Dual 3070 OHG, which is the overclocking version as well, right? And I do have that up here. And those are the specs, a bit more terse, maybe a little too terse, but I think it has all of the key things on it. 
and it shows you what this particular card is capable of doing. And if you compare the two in the next slide, you will see I've highlighted the differences as well. And believe it or not, it has the same difference in terms of the actual HDMI. It has an extra HDMI over what the Founders Edition has. It has uh, two uh, eight pin connectors on it for the 12 volt power though. So whereas the, the 1060 Ti only had one, this one has two. So you need two cables coming from your power supply and please don't split it. I think there's a lot of warnings that other reviewers have done, but it's a general good practice for electrical controls and electrical safety. You don't want to overstress the actual wires with more current going through them. The reason that they put two connectors is that you get twice the actual thickness of the cable going to the card from the power supply. So whereas the cables might be, let's say, a 14 gauge wire, more likely it's probably a 16, but 16 or 14. And there's actually, uh, it's split between grounds and 12 volts. So let's say four of them going to it through each cable. By doing two cables, they get eight of them going through with the same wire gauge and therefore it can handle a lot more current. Otherwise, if you were to split it, and they do have the splitters, and you can, some of the power supply cables come with the splitter, it will actually draw all the current through the one set of cables going to the power supply. I do not recommend uh, you doing it that way because it will overheat. Both of these cards recommend, whether it's the Founders Edition or these ASUS partner cards, they recommend that you have a 750 watt power supply. Although some people say that you should go with the 3080, which also says 750, that you should go with an, at least an 850 watt power supply. You see, what else is over here? The dimensions are also different, it's the same thing. This one is only a two fan board and it is shorter than the Founders Edition. Not by much, but it is shorter, but it's a lot thicker. They don't have that special NVIDIA uh, cooling mechanism that NVIDIA has uh, built onto their Founders Edition. So they had they just beefed, beefed up their standard way of doing with it. This one has a lot more RGB on it too than the 3060 or the 3080. Although there's some, there's some on the 3060. So I think of the three I got, the 3080 is probably the least RGB, but there is a little bit there. And then, the slots, again, just like with the case of the 3060 Ti, it's a 2.7 slot board. So if you have a small motherboard or a small form factor build you're trying to do, that might be a problem. And uh, I think that covers it. Just wanted to tell this little story and uh, let you know that still I think your best bet is if you want to get one of these cards or anything, whether it's uh, one of these cards or an AMD graphics card or an the new AMD processor chips. The best bet, in my opinion, and I can tell you this from personal experience now, is to find a micro center. Maybe you know somebody who lives near one that could do you this favor, but that's a big favor to ask, right? If they can just get over there at least two hours early, obviously some of the bigger areas, I mean, right here in Long Island, that's not a, a really high dense area compared to let's say Chicago or Los Angeles, for example, but it is pretty large compared to other cities. I mean, we have in this county alone, we have like 2.6 million people, which is a lot for a county. And that's the only micro center in the county. I think it's worthwhile to take the time. It's kind of cold out there today. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. But I had my, my big coat, my winter snow coat, wool hat, my gloves, and my wife made sure I left with a scarf as well. We, you wind up setting up a, like almost a little community talking to some of the other people online. So there's some socialism. And you know, by pure chance, the same guy that I was on the line with last week, who was right in front of me, and we were positions uh, 23 and 24. He was 23, I was 24. Well, today he was 15 and I was 16. And just by pure chance, I get out of my car, get to the back of the line, and there he is. This time, though, I went to the front of the line first to find out who was maintaining the list. On all these cases, there are people, it sort of becomes standard practice now. Somebody who gets there in the first 10 or so, they'll start a list of uh, the people who are there with their names, phone numbers, and then every hour or so they try to call roll. If you disappear and you're not answering like within a few minutes, you could lose your spot. So just keep that in mind. It's best to wait after the roll call. And then if you have to go to the restroom, go run and come back. So anyway, uh, if you got anything at all out of this video, and I know I didn't open this stuff up, but hopefully you understand my rationale for doing that. Uh, if you got anything at all out of this video, if you could just consider subscribing to my channel, 
it would be really helpful and appreciated, believe me. So until the next time, take care and stay safe and stay healthy, please.